Hey, it's Eileen. You're listening to Peer Light, where we explore how you can believe in yourself and be happy with who you are. A lot of people get stuck because of fear and self doubt. I can help you deal with negative self talk so that you can confidently pursue your dreams. I'm a coach and a Kundalini yoga and meditation teacher. And this is episode 17. And what I want to talk about today is what we can all learn from Kate Spade. So Kate Spade, if you haven't heard, um, committed suicide earlier this week. And she was um, a fashion designer and an accessories designer and a very uh, unique and quirky and fun and playful one at that. If you look at her creations, they've all got a lot of kind of positive, uplifting energy. So I think this was a bit of a shock to a lot of people, not just the people who kind of looked at or, or used the stuff that she created, but even the people close to her. And I want to share a story from when I was in university. So when I was in university, I hated school and I ultimately hated my life. Like I really did not enjoy um, being there and doing that. But like, I felt like that was what I had to do at the time. And at one point, I think this was in second year, when I went to my doctor, my family doctor, I burst into tears because I was so stressed out. And I was pretty sure that I was gonna, like, fail out of school. And, you know, I don't know, like, I, I was just, I was in a really bad place. And because of that interaction, like, she asked me a couple of questions, and then she ended up prescribing antidepressants. And she gave me a referral to a psychiatrist. So I ended up I ended up going to see a psychiatrist at school, like one at the student like services center clinic or whatever. And I initially saw the the guy who was the head of that practice. And he then referred me to another person on the team to work with. And when, when this was going on, like I had no intention of ever telling anyone. I'm pretty sure the only person that knew was the guy that I was dating at the time. Because I was really good at pretending to be okay. So I was really good at having a smile on my face and pretending everything was fine, even though I really felt like shit inside. And um, the first psychiatrist that I saw, the guy that was the head of the department, he asked me if it was okay to leave a voicemail on the phone number that I provided, which was the landline to my parents' house. I was living at home at the time, and this was before cell phones. And so I said, no, like it is not okay to leave a voicemail. And um, the second psychiatrist that I saw, the one that I actually ended up working with, she never asked me that question. And I remember wondering about it, but then she didn't say anything and I kind of forgot about it. And anyway, she left a voicemail and that's how my parents found out that I was depressed. I think I originally didn't want to tell them because I didn't want them to worry And, you know, the fact that they didn't know is not at all any reflection of their parenting or anything like that. They definitely knew I was stressed out and that something was up, but I think they just thought it was, you know, school's intense and that kind of thing. So I think this is more of a a reflection of how easy it is to hide your inner state from people. So to hide what's going on with you emotionally, even people who are close to you and even people who live under the same roof. It's possible that like they actually have no idea what's going on inside you. So no one knows what's going on inside you unless you tell them. I want to say that again. No one knows what's going on inside you unless you tell them. I know it can feel like people should know because it's so obvious to you. But at the same time, it's so easy to try to hide how you feel, especially when you're depressed, because it seems in a way, or at least it did for me, like it's a personal defect Like it's some kind of proof that there's something wrong with you. And it's also really important to note that asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength because it'll benefit not only you, but everyone around you. Because no matter what is running through your mind when you're in a dark place, there are people who would be shocked and devastated if you were to take your life. So getting back to Kate Spade, like her husband released a statement that said, there was no indication and no warning that she would do this. Like it was a complete shock. You never really know what someone else's inner life is like unless you ask them. Even if they're smiling and even if they're saying they're okay, like it, it's it's interesting. Um, you know, I think, you know, saying stuff like, oh, I'm fine. It's fine. Like 
that I think a lot of people do that, but that could be a sign that someone's covering something up. Because outer circumstances are not necessarily indicative of inner experience. And what someone else's life looks like doesn't necessarily correlate with what we assume it must be like. Because we often make assumptions like, you know, if someone has more money, their life is easier than ours. Or if they have more fame, they must have a better quality of life. Or, you know, maybe if they're successful, they must have like a sense of fulfillment that we feel we're missing. But all of these are just assumptions. They're not truths. They're just what our minds project based on the limited information we have about someone else's life. So again, just to recap, no one knows what's going on inside of you unless you tell them. And if you need help, please ask for it. It's the most courageous thing to do. And I'll put some links to um, support organizations in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, may you be guided by your light.